out with the mixing. Just pop the lid off, pop the top off. Put that in there. Sorted. Nice. I've got a ball bearing in there now. Make it a bit easier to shake it up and get it ready to use on this model. So as always, it's been primed, just simple gray primer, partly because it's the only one I've got. Um, but for models like this, it, you know, gray is a nice neutral color that you can paint pretty much anything onto. So um, it works. Um, if I was, if I had like a bigger model, um, a fancier model or something like that, I would consider perhaps getting a primer that would work as a base layer as well. Uh, and a good thing about a lot of the primers that you can get as well is a lot of the companies that that make them specifically for miniature painting will also have the matching acrylic so that you know you can do the base primer in one color and then get that matching color as an acrylic to go over the top if you wanted to add more detail or um or just build on top of the the color layers that you've already got um yeah we'll give that a good shake okay right now then let's see what color this actually yeah, so it's quite dark. So what we might do is we might mix a little bit of another, a lighter green, like a tree, like this tree ant green here, um, just here. So I've used uh, troll skin, troll skin green, and then I've also got some tree ant green as well. And I'm gonna mix the two up and hopefully get a slightly lighter greenish color to use i could just put a little bit of white in it but um i'd rather this time around add just a, a, sh a, a green that's a few shades lighter in the hope that we can get like a nice happy medium between the two okay so you probably want this is a relatively small model so i'm going to start with a relatively small brush um okay so i've chosen my brush get it nice and wet Get rid of that excess moisture. And then let's mix this paint and see what we get. Hmm. What I might do is I might just dab a little bit on the back and then we can sort of see what this color will look like on him. Now. I'm thinking that I've made that perhaps a little too pale there. So I'm now going to chuck in a little bit more of the troll skin green. Or in fact, shall we just put on some troll skin green and see what that looks like as well? Because, you know, because we're, we're only putting on like a tiny little amount here, it doesn't matter. We can paint over it if it's, if it's not right. So I'm not super worried about that. Let's get rid of that green, give the brush a little wash. Um... Dip it in the darker green colour and then let's see what that looks like on it on there. Hmm. So here you can see the two shades that I've sort of put on there. Uh, I've also found a bit of a better way to focus the camera this time as well. It just might be a little shaky when I do it because I've got to hold the button down. So I'm just wondering as if I have done a goblin before. I can't fully remember what I did. I suspect I actually might have gone with the um, with the. So I'm just I'm actually just looking at the one that I've done in the past. It's not really focusing very well on that camera, but um, just wondering about the colours that I've used on this. If I can get it to focus. Be too close. There we go. You can see that one I've used quite a dark greenish color. And then I've used the wash, which has made it darker still. So I might go for, I might just go for that troll color, that troll skin color. Yeah, let's do that. Right, so. Mm. That all mixed up. 
Get a nice dollop of it on there, and then let's get going with the painting. So at the moment, nice and simple, just gonna go on over and try and colour all of the bits that are exposed skin. Okay, so on the model, he's got like a strap that goes over his back. I'm trying to be careful, but as ever, I'm not worried if I make a mistake because I know that, you know, this is only the start of this model. And I'll have plenty of opportunities later to, um, to, to fix it if I do go over the lines a little bit. You know, this is, it's a whole process. So, you know, don't, ex don't worry if in the first few licks of paint, you get it wrong, you know? It happens. I've done it before. I'm not very experienced with this either, being quite honest. Um, so, you know, it's not something that you really have to, like, worry about, though. There's always a way out. And a lot of the time, I may have, I think I talked about this briefly last week, but there's definitely as well. I've also, the, oh, just side note as well this week, my webcam is a little bit more maneuverable. So hopefully you're not just staring at my forehead, though. I suspect that's what it's going to be anyway. Um, my room is 20 degrees today, so it's cooler than it was last week, but still not exactly um, uh, lovely. Or at least not for me anyway. I've always been a warm, warm-bodied person. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I think I said last week, you really don't need to worry about making mistakes. It's about steering into the curb. about you know you have to put yourself out there to begin with and if you do go wrong if you do make a mistake then it's okay it's you know it's not there's always a way to fix it it might take a bit more time some more perseverance and it might not be fixed straight away like there might be a bit of a process to you getting it to look exactly how you want it to oh. There we go. I'm just doing this front bit here. I'm going to have a go as well at printing the smaller handles that don't have these bits on so that it doesn't keep trying to focus on the edges of them. It just make, it'll make it a bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing, uh, given that it likes to um, it likes to focus on the edges. It's, it's a good lens that I've got on here. It's just that it seems to... Um, the focal range isn't super big and because of that it like picks a point like you know already here it's picking like this point to focus on not the actual model which is annoying but you know like i said every week i'm sort of trying because my the the setup i've got for when i'm streaming uh games and stuff i'm quite content with i'm quite happy with i think that's that's fine uh does the job it works but the painting one is definitely uh, uh, something that I'm I'm having to uh, like actively work on because it's well I mean the first one I did was um, a bit of a blurry nightmare second one was better and this is the third so you know I'm still pa only a part way through this process myself as it is right, so he's got like an armband here I'm just trying to avoid as best I can getting paint on but again it's just not the end of the world. It goes, well, like, look on the back, I've coloured in the armband. But that's fine, because we'll come back and we'll do it in a brighter colour later on. It'll be one of the sort of more highlighted areas that we can pop in. Now, this, this model has got a lot of fine detail on it, in particular the hat, which we'll come on to later. Um, but for now, with the face, which I think you can just about see there, um, we're just going to do it like fully green for now, uh, teeth and all, because we can go back over in white later. So let's just try and get as much of that painted green as we can. Okay. 
There we go. We've got his little face done. We'll do his arm on this side as well. Let's see if I can turn that so you guys can see it a bit easier. You can just see where I'm painting here. Making sure as well, don't just paint the bits that you can see. You've got to go around and paint all the under bits, like under his arm and and this, that and the other. There are there are situations where you can get away with maybe like leaving a little bit grey and unpainted. But obviously if you can help it, you know, you wanna you wanna have it all coloured and painted. Now that is also in just here. Try and get that in there. And just under. He's got like a little um shoulder pad. You can sort of see it there. Um which I'm just trying to paint underneath, which is another one of the sort of smaller areas. Um And we'll do his, his hands as well. So I'm going to have a go at doing this hand. I'm just going to move the light a little bit. I've got it sandwiched between me and the actual model. There we go. I have to apologise. You may hear the sound of the camera focusing because I'm manually focusing it on the camera itself, not just uh, sticking my hand behind it before because it's actually a quicker and more surefire way to ensure that I get the focus that I want. I just apologise for the um camera shake when it happened when um when i do it i can already see that you're mainly just seeing uh oh, there we go actually that's a at least now you're not just staring well you are still staring at my my, <laughs> my sweaty forehead but um it's not just blank. You can at least see a bit of my face still. Right, so I want to get as much of that hand done. I've accidentally called in some of the actual handle of the weapon. But again, that is not, that's a non-issue. Might seem like it now, but it really isn't. It's something that we can fix with ease later. So I believe this model is another titan forge model that i 3d printed um they did a, a set of goblins um oh, i've forgotten what the month was called now uh, because obviously they theme each month but it was i think it was like the goblin king or something like that um but it was really good because you know it was an entire like goblins are a pretty common enemy um particularly at lower levels as well so you're likely to come across them at some point. Um, so having so much so much choice, because if I like if I remember, for example, I believe that the like it comes with you, you print the the torso, the like the body and head, and then the arms, like the weapons and stuff, you print separately, you glue those on yourself so that you can sort of customize to a certain degree um exactly how you want your goblin to look. So uh, Grubble here, uh, I, I wanted him to be like, you know, two two weapons, uh, one in each hand, and I wanted them to be a bit cleavery, a little bit, you know, like I didn't want him to be sword and shield, I wanted him to be more, um, uh, just a bit more brutal, I guess, a little bit more like, you know, he's also got another sword, actually, well I say sword, um, sort of short, swordy cleaver thing on his waist. In addition to um, the ones he's holding, and I particularly like the hook as well, the sort of hooked blade here. Um, I think it'll be fun, uh, fun to paint. That is. Um, okay, so I think we need to do a little bit more under here, a bit more there.
there we go okay so <coughs> this is going to be now where i do a difficult bit that you can't really see i don't know if you can see on the model he's got these like as part of his hat these like sort of almost like flaps like you get on um those i forgot what they're called now those woolen hats that you would sometimes get um where they have like the flaps that come down over the ears he's sort of got those but there's bits of skin underneath it that need to be painted. So this might be one of those moments where I'm painting something that it's hard for you guys to see. And that's because I'm having to stick, carefully stick my paintbrush into, ooh, into the, uh, just into there. Uh, it'll be clearer, I think, in a minute once I show you what it looks like afterwards. Um, well, and actually also a little bit of skin just here as well. And you'll see I've hit the handle on the weapon. It doesn't matter. We fix this later. As I said, a non-issue. Good. Right. And do his creepy little toes, which are actually, it's probably really difficult to see, but the toes have come out really well. You can even see the gross nails on the ends of the toes. So actually later on, we might actually try and paint the nails on, like make them a gross yellowy color or something like that. I think that would be quite fitting for, uh, for uh, 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 Grubble, Grubble the Goblin. Uh, just there on his like his inner inner but it's not even his inner thigh it's lower than that it's like <clears throat> below the knee the shin area but on the inside and then yeah i've also also this base is a nice base as well we're obviously going to be painting the skull um a bony color and then the horns a darker color like you would probably see on a ram or something like that you get that keratin sort of coloration in there um And let's get this leg done. So this leg's a lot more exposed by the looks of it than the other leg. So we'll be nice and liberal with our paint here. Trying to carefully paint around here because we've got what look like some metal rings that go around the uh, the bottom of the sort of leather. You can just see them on there. There's like metal rings on the end of each of the leather sort of tassely bits that are coming off of the sort of loin clothy area. I keep calling it the loin clothy area. I'm not really sure what else to call it. Um, yeah, where he's got like a little pouch of I don't know stuff, whatever Grubble keeps in there. I, I always imagine goblins, like, you know, much like many of the sort of memes and stuff online, that goblins are collectors. Um, so it's just probably filled with a load of worthless, but nonetheless, um, well, worthless to the average person, anyway, stuff. But actually, Grubble cares a lot about what he keeps in there. Yeah, so again, we've got another difficult spot here. Where I've got to go under the loincloth and on and this time it is on the inner thigh. So you're probably not going to be able to see this bit unfortunately be just because um, I can barely see it. It's I'm kind of painting blind for some of these bits because you can just see the part where it's grey and all I can do is shove my paintbrush in but it's so small that the act of putting the paintbrush in blocks your view. So you just sort of have to guide it in and hope that you've hit the right part of it. I think I have there. Now there's a few bits and we might need to go for a smaller brush here. Yeah, we go. We'll use this one, I think. 
that are really teeny tiny, like between the straps on the back of his leg. Let's see how, how much focus we can get here and if he can actually see it. So he's got straps here and there are some really thin gaps where his leg sort of sticks out. Sorry, not his leg, his, well, the skin is visible. So I've taken a much smaller brush in an attempt to very delicately run paint along those gaps. Okay, so you can kind of see there now because you can see the grey band that separates it. But that skin that's just above it before it goes back to being the uh, bracer. That's why I've done that. Just gonna maybe touch up these toes a little bit. They are proper grim. Like he's got pro like little little um gross claw nails, um, <laughs> on his feet. <laughs> um, have we got any others? Any other spots? Of bare skin. No, I think a lot of that is the sort of more leathery looking stuff. Okay. Let's put a little bit more. Just on the face. I'm actually this time trying to avoid the eyes if I can, but I might put a little bit in there. Anyway, right, let's get just inside there. There we go. That's the ticket. Oh, and under that arm. Oh, we missed that. Okay, I can actually move back to the bigger brush now. So I'm going to pop that one back into soak and pick up the brush I was using before. So we've got to do this underarm bit here. Nice and easy. There we go. That's done. Just like that. Get his armpit done as well. But to be honest, I imagine that goblin armpits really stink. Certainly would not want to have to deal with that. Or just generally, just goblins in general, I imagine that they smell pretty bad. <laughs> okay. So we've got a nice little base layer there of the skin. I'm just having to, oh, the ears. Nearly forgot the ears poking out from under the, uh, from the hat. But the most important and distinguishing feature of a goblin is the big pointy ears. So let's do that as well. Now he's got rings in his ears as well. So we can absolutely come back and paint those later. Put that there. Make sure we get the tip of the ear done and the underneath of the ear. And then as I said, I've left the rings as best I can. Though it wouldn't matter, you know, if you've not, if you struggle to to keep your hand. I mean, my hands aren't the most steady when I'm doing this. Like, they, 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 they do shake a little bit. So don't worry if you do paint them in because, again, we'll be coming back over those. Probably with metallic paint later, so it really doesn't matter that much. So, like, this, this ear here, I've already accidentally painted them all. Well, two of them anyway. Rings, that is. But that's fine. Not a problem. We can fix that later with ease. You know? This is just like the base layer. We don't have to worry a great deal about it. There we go. He's got nice, he has got massive ears, though. Now, looking at that, I mean, I suppose they're being squashed down by the uh, marvelous hat that he's wearing. But still. Okay, so are there any other spots of green that we need to add? Might just go over some of these bits here. Just a tad more. Again, there's a few gaps that I can see just on the inside of the chest here. He's also wearing some sort of necklace. So I'm trying not to paint the necklace, but make sure I'm painting around it. And I kind of have painted it, the necklace that is. But we'll fix it later. I'm not going to worry. 
Right, so the back done, legs, I think it's done, front of the legs, the feet, that is, <laughs> the front of the legs, also known as the feet, are done. Um, ah, here we go. And there's some little bits just around his neck, where the neck meets the, the, the neck meets the head and the hat. Need going over. There we go. Sorted. And I think I think that's largely it. <clears throat> Okay, so that is the skin done, and already you can see like starting to come to life. I find that when the the skin is like, because obviously with the ones that we've done the last two weeks, they've been quite heavily armor clad, um, and they do obviously immediately start to come to life as soon as you get that metallic paint on there. But like the goblin already is starting to look well, like a goblin just from that first layer of green paint that we've put on him, and no other color yet. So. We are now going to move on to the next colour, which probably makes sense that it's a brown. Because we have got, um, let's see, what do we want? I think we go for rigid leather. Um, we'll get minotaur hide as well. And then we'll get some white just in case we need it. Um, give this a good shake. I'll just uh, pop him into view. Give him a little focus. You can have a little look. How it's going. So far. Okay, so we've got some of that rigid leather on there. And we'll get a little bit of the Minotaur hide, just a little bit, not loads. Is there anything else that we could use? There's Owlbear Brown as well, which is a nice darker colour. But the rigid leather obviously makes sense, given, given that he's wearing leather. We'll put a little bit of the Minotaur hide on there as well. So that we've got a bit of option. And the other thing we can do as well is, we could, dry, we could always dry brush, brush some highlights on in a paler brown. And it's always easier to obviously, you know, when you're doing highlights, use a paler colour than the, the one that you're painting onto. So we could just go for the straight darker colour and then add to it as we, as we need. Just give that a good wash because we can use the same size paint brush here, the one that we've just used for the skin. Not the small one, but the, the other one. Put a little wash, dip it in the brown, and then let's have a little look at how this brown will look. So let's start at the front. Right, so I can immediately see that's a little bit pale for my liking. So actually, I know I said we can get some white, but I'm actually going to get some black here and just put, and I mean a, a teeny drop. Because I don't want it to be really dark. I just don't want it to be sort of paler brown because that will make it harder to do highlights. So give the black a good shake. And then. Make a little pile of black there, and then we can mix it. We can mix it however we like then. Mixing nice, darker brown color. That's much nicer, I think. Let's load our brush a bit. And start applying some of that. Yeah, that's that's nicer. Yeah, so again, I'm being quite liberal here because <clears throat> these seem to go up all over here. We can always wipe off excess if we need to. And I'm not going to worry too much about the rings right now because we can go over them in a metallic paint later, as always. Put that on there. 
Okay. Just going to pop it off of its stand so that I can be a bit more agile with it, um, with how I'm moving it around. <clears throat> and hopefully make it a bit easier for you guys to see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm actually going to mix a separate area that's even darker still. And we might do the shoes in that. So it's not entirely conform because I imagine that, you know, Goblins probably live off scraps and things that are left behind or they find or steal from those around them. So it doesn't matter a great deal if we do different colours of brown around the model. Might look a bit weird, but you know, well we we well we won't really know until the end, will we? Um what it looks like. But part of miniature painting is taking those risks. It's making a decision and going, you know what, I'm gonna do this and see what it looks like. And you have to follow it through to the end. You know, like, I could do this and then be like, oh, do you know what? I actually regret doing that. But follow it through. Don't just stop because suddenly you're thinking that you've made a, 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 a grievous mistake by, uh, by using a dark colour. I'm already liking the contrast that there is. It might be a bit difficult to see because I've got a uh, sort of yellowy light on it. But you can just sort of see between the shoes... Well, I say shoes, they're more like uh, cloth wraps on the feet. And um, the leather, sort of tunic -y, well, not tunic, but um, I don't know, pants that he's wearing. We'll be nice and liberal with this darker brown we've made on the feet. So this again is going to be, I've got to stick it between, there's like a mushroom on the, on the base and it's going to make it a little difficult for me to see. I'm having to close an eye and really focus in. And apologies that all you're seeing is like a blown out white forehead. This, this camera is the one that I'm now struggling with. I feel like I'm doing pretty well now with the, the main one, which is the important one. Um, one on me is the one that I need to work on now because that one's still a bit iffy in terms of when you can actually see my face. Basically you can really see my face when I pause to get more um, paint or decide what I'm going to do next or whatever. When I'm actually painting my face gets lost but to be fair I suppose that kind of works because when I'm actually painting it's probably more interesting to watch me painting than watch my face anyway so it kind of balances out. I already see there's a small patch that needs some more green, but we'll do that later when we're touching up. Don't need to worry about it now. Just go over these bits around the edges. It's like sort of I don't want, I don't know what to call them, like tufty tufty bits. Nice, okay, that's looking good. So next, I'm actually as well, what we'll do is, there's like a little um, stud pad on the, well, looking at it, the right leg, right? I'm actually gonna do this in a darker color and we'll come back and put some metallic paint on those studs as well. But for now, let's do that actual pad, the darker brown. As well and what we'll do is we'll actually maybe even at the top here we'll start doing the hat with that same dark brown so you want I want this to be kind of thin-ish because because there's so many like tiny little features on the hat 
I don't want to put so much paint on that some of that gets lost. I'm kind of doing it a bit, not light. I'm making sure there's still color all over it, but I want it to be kind of loose so that we can put a lot of highlights in there. Because if it's too thick, the paint will sort of glob up in the cracks and we'll lose some of those um, details in the hat. And we don't want that. Um, we want to try and keep as many of the features uh, visible as we can. So when I do think I need to load my brush, I'm only literally putting it in a tiny at the very tip gets a little bit on. And then we've got the rim of the hat as well, which you can kind of see is unpainted. So we're going to do that as well. And here we kind of have to be careful because we've got obviously the face. And we do want to try and keep this brown off of the face if we can. There we go. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some more, because I've used most of that rigid leather now that I sort of originally got out. So let's get a little bit more of the rigid leather. So I want these flappy bits to be the rigid leather. Sort of colour. And then Round the back and try and colour in without getting it too much on the face. Again, though, I'm not going to worry. As soon as it dries, we can put on more uh, green paint if need be. It's not the end of the world. Okay, we've now got those painted on there. I'm going to go back here, paint onto there. Now I'm just going around that leg piece because we want that bracer to cut the actual um sort of bracery bit to contrast with the um the wrappings I guess we call them that the, the the wrappings that it's attached to. So again, I have to apologize if it's um, sort of going out of focus a little bit. You can see the area that I'm sort of getting to is just tucked up behind the, the sort of hilt of this sword and just underneath the, the sort of loin clothy bit there. Move over to the other side and fill in these bits here. I am wondering. No, no, I think that is line. I couldn't decide if this bit here was skin or not. I think we're going to go with uh, leather. And just paint it up. Like that. Okay. Nice. We'll do his armbands the same. So, what we'll do is we'll try and do a bit around the actual spiky bit, one colour. 
and then we can do the dark brown on the actual spike. Who knows, it might not work, but give it a go. That one done. We'll do the other arm. Well, aiming to go around. There we go. Aiming to go just around the spiked part of the bracer. Because no doubt that that bit has been fixed onto the um, the actual armband itself. So. For me, it makes sense that there might be a slight contrast in the colours there. Yeah. All right. Nice. So we've got here then. Just realized I put in the streaming phone, didn't hit the done button to update it, so it probably still says I'm playing RimWorld. <coughs> <coughs> okay. So now, we're going to go back to our darker brown to do this bit on the side here. And I'm trying to decide what to do with this bit of cloth at the back. But we'll... Come to that in a little bit first. Get this bit done. Just refocus that. There we go. Now you can see which bit I'm painting. Which is always good on a miniature painting stream. Do that around there. And around there. Nice. Sure. We could also experiment to be fair because that's actually drying a lot paler brown than I thought it would. So we could also experiment with some darker um, dry brushing as well. Which would be interesting to see how that goes. So what else have we got? We've got like a shoulder pad. Which will go with the darker brown, I think. Just here. Do the shoulder pad. And the brown. Okay. Now, what we'll do as well, we'll do this now to get a little bit of extra colour in there. That band on his, well, looking at it, your left, his right arm, that band, we'll do it red, and that'll just make it pop a little bit. It's nice to get, um, if you can, like a, a colour, distinguishing colour somewhere on the model just to make it um just to give it more of a contrast contrast really does uh like maketh the model 
um, so to speak, with this kind of thing. Um, I should probably use a slightly smaller brush, but I'm going to be bold and uh, try and do it with this one. That is a little bit bright, but we don't need to worry because when we add the dark wash, we'll bring that tone down. And this is the tricky bit, is under the arm. Making sure it joins up underneath, there we go. Sorted. We've got a nice little bit of contrast in colour there. And then we'll go for the lighter brown. Can you see on the back where he's got a strap that the shoulder blade is connected to? That I think we should do in the um, the lighter brown colour. I'll bring this up closer for you guys to see. And get the painting. So it also appears to be what the patch of pelt on his waist that we did a few minutes ago is um, connected to as well. So this sort of band seems to run all the way around and up and here we've come across the little, I think it's a small skull of some kind on some string. I think that's what the necklace is. So we'll bring the brown up to about here, skip over and try and get that to join. There we go. Looking good. We'll do these bands along the back as well. We'll bring that across there, that across there, like so. And see where that is. And then it's just a case of following them around. We'll do the hilt separately because I want them to be, we'll make a colour for the hilt. Because I don't want them to be the same as um, like the clothing and stuff like that. Now you can see, they might not be, but there's a really tiny little bit here. It just needs to be that paler brown colour where that band, where the uh, band comes around. So we'll stick that under there. So that we can get that painted up as well, the underneath. Tiny little bit of thing as well. Now the question is, what colour do we do the loincloth-y bit on the back? Because at the front, I mean, it's kind of covered by that and I have sort of just done it the brown, the pale browny colour. But again, it doesn't have to be. That We can go for something different here. So do we think darker? or lighter, that back loincloth bit. I think we go darker, and then we can add highlights to it later on. Making sure that I'm getting those 
underneath bits and if I can see a way in to get underneath it so I can barely see it so this is going to be something you guys probably can't see either I'm going to be sticking that underneath there and just trying to get maybe the edges because I can't get a good angle on it up on the underneath of this loincloth like so okay <clears throat> So next, because it's already, this is, you know, it's looking good already, I think. Next, we should maybe start doing this pouch here. So here, we'll actually use our paler brown, the um, Minotaur hide, I think this is, to do this pouch, because it'll just hopefully contrast again. And we can make it darker if we need to. Like if we decide, oh, that's too much, and that's fine. You know, we'll be able to fix it. If it needs fixing. And you can see, uh, well, I don't know if you can actually. There's a stud on the pouch. Yeah, you can see. There's a stud on the pouch just here. I'm going to leave because we'll come back and do that in metal in a metallic paint in a little bit. And then let's just get a little bit more of this on there. There we go. <coughs> nice. I'm liking how this is coming on. Ah, do you know what we haven't done? We haven't done those arm bits, have we? In a dark colour. We'll do that now. And again on the other side. Just get that on there, and again. There are some sort of metally bits on there, so we can go over in some metallic paint later. Just add in a couple of highlights on those braces if we want. I'm just going to touch up a few green areas that need touching up. And there, there's one on the feet somewhere as well. I think it was just about here. There. There. Awesome. Now I've seen a brown area on the loincloth that needs touching up. So you, you can do the touches up whenever you like, really. It's there's no urgency. Um there's a few situations where it's gonna be like time sensitive that you touch them up before paint dries or whatever. Um but again, like it's not I've just decided to do that because it's also given me time to think about what else I want to do with the model. Because now we're getting to the point where we want to be starting to do some finer details and add in some layering of, of the colours. Um, we're just waiting for bits to dry. So we'll maybe start on the, uh, the weapons. So for that, we'll grab Skeleton Bone. Which I've said before. I'll just uh, move that up a bit. One of my favourites, the Skeleton Bone. I think it looks really nice and I think it, it, it really brings things to life. And do you know what we might even do? Depends on if we get time and um, how quickly it takes for the um, dark wash and stuff to dry, but we could even put some blood on it. Like put fake blood, obviously. <laughs> Take that skeleton bone. Just a little bit on there.
make sure that our paintbrush is moist but not super wet and then we can just nice and quickly start colouring in these weapons because I, I imagine that you know goblins would be quite they're probably out the best smith so they'll take what they find but the weapons that they do make themselves are probably made from bones and things like that like kind of like a little bit primitive like not really because you can see that there's some design gone into these but I just think that the skeleton bone colour suits this style of weapon quite a bit. Okay, and then the other one, which we'll do in bone colour also. It also works nicely because the I know from the other goblin I painted, the one I showed earlier where I've also got blood on it, that the red paint looks really nice against the bone coloured uh, bone coloured paint. And if we wanted to, we could even do that one on his waist. If we wanted to make it a bit different, we could make that one metal. Like a dark, cruddy, dirty metal colour. You know, like crude iron sort of colour. <coughs> um, okay, so that's those done. Shall we? yeah, let's do that. Let's get we'll go with the Dwergar metal color. It's like a it's a metallic color, but it's sort of brownish. It's nice. Um, I did a previous model with it. Um, really liked the way it came out as well. There, so we know that we've used it. Dry off the brush, and then let's have a go and see what this would look like on here. Right, yeah, so there we've got like a, it's hard to see because the paint's still wet. We have got a metallic paint, there's some sort of fe uh, finishings, there's like something wrapped around it, so that's why I've left that there. And there's, oh god, we're going to need a smaller brush here. There's like a, a tiny gap between those two pieces that I'm going to attempt to paint now. Um, but it really is teeny tiny. Oof. A little bit rough, but again, that's fine. We can go over it later on. No need to worry ourselves. Now, so for the handles, Do this brownish colour, which is nice and simple. We've already got it mixed up. And I think it looks good. <laughs> that one 
there like that. And sort of wrap around the front here. Very nice. And we'll try and do the same on this side. And here you'll see how little it mattered that we accidentally painted the handle green with the skin. Because this will just go over that, no problem. It was more so at the front, but as you can already see, it's been painted over, so it doesn't actually matter. And we'll maybe try and get a little bit just around there. There we go, right? So we've got the handles done on those now. We'll also do the handle on one on his waist. Which again, we accidentally covered in green. It doesn't actually matter. At all, really. In just a few seconds, we've gone over it and it doesn't matter anymore. Oops, sorry, not for light. So, let's have a little look, shall we? It's looking nice. Brush a little wash, and then I know we don't we usually do it last, but seeing as we've got the, the skeleton paint, I am just going to quickly put a layer of that of that paint on the on this skull here on the base. Normally we do the bases last, but given the size of this like feature on the base, I want this this to be dried come the time for doing the rest of the base and then the wash. Just making sure that we've covered as much of that as we can. Nice. <laughs> it also just gives us a little bit of time for some of the paint that we've put on to dry and time for me to think about what I want to do. So I reckon that we get a little bit of gold on there, like those rings on the ears. I think that sort of gold against the green, you know, like loads of like little gold earrings put on there will be good. So let's get the gold nice and shook up. A little bit of gold, we really don't need loads, so a teeny tiny little bit. We'll go for the teeny tiny brush as well. Because we are dealing in tiny, tiny details here. And we could even actually, those bits of gold, those bits, sorry, those rings at the bottom of there. But actually, we try that now. We put a little splodge of gold on those. I think it would look really nice. You might notice as well, so you know earlier I was talking about how I don't have the, the steadiest of hands. You might have noticed like sometimes I use um, like this finger here 
uh, to prop against it to help me when it comes to it. So I've got a little bit of a steadier, just instead of just free holding my hand where you are at much higher risk of slipping or, you know, your hands just shaking generally, you can just use a finger. Like now I'm using my little finger on the end. I don't know if you can even see, but my little finger is pushing against it. So there's some resistance there. And it just helps focus my hand a little bit more. Especially when you're doing those teeny tiny details like that. Now, let's see if we can do a couple of these rings. It is going to be tough because these are really small, fine details. That side. Okay, I put a bit too much on the ear there, but we can go back over it in the green. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now you can sort of see it's much better. It's gone on much better on this side on the onto the ring ear. Ear rings. I think it looks nice on those bits at the bottom of the, the sort of rings that are at the end of the leather strips on his front. And then we'll get a sort of, let's go for a um, mithril silver and we'll maybe add a, a splash of uh, black in there to bring the, the colour down to much more of an iron looking colour that we can then start doing some of these studs. that on there then. We've got that mithril silver now and then let's start mixing that up with a little bit of black. Let's take a blob and we'll mix it separately on my uh, there we go. Get the deeper silvery grey colour which I do think does just work a little bit better. Let's just see what happens. We dab. A couple of these studs with the silver. See if we can get them. It's very, very fine. And it's difficult to actually get them. Got the areas around it. So I'm sort of blobbing. Like I'm not brushing. I'm pressing just the studs to see. We can get the silver to just come off onto those. And it kind it's kind of working to be honest. I'll do it on here as well. A bit easier on here as these studs are a little bit bigger. I'll show you in a minute. There we go. Put that in there. Put that done there on those sides. And the hat is actually a load of studs on the hat. So I'm wondering if we keep that base brown, do these, and then later on we'll go over the hat with some dry brushing. So for those that perhaps can't remember or haven't seen, dry brushing is where you basically take a completely dry paintbrush, dip it in the paint that you want, don't wet it, dip it in the paint that you want, wipe as much of the excess of that paint as you can off and then brush liberally across the model. And what happens is the paint, because it's not got as much liquid in it, it's sort of quite sticky and it clings to the areas that the brush crosses and you're left with these sort of nice, um, I don't know how to describe them, almost effects. Now the top of the hat, it's 
trying to decide what color to do this top but you can sort of see the difference that the iron is making i've perhaps been slightly too liberal but again that is absolutely fine we can go back over it later on let's get a nice little dab of it on there And then that skull, or whatever it is, I'm not actually sure what it is, but I'm going to go with like the mithril silver. Just on there. Like so. And then we'll get some of that skeleton bone colour, because it's also good for colouring in rope. Um, and go over the actual necklace outline necklace or the actual rope that goes around hidden away on that side a bit you can see it here though let's go across the back of the neck with that color so that we can see it there nice and clearly See if we can join it up as well. Which I think, yeah, we have. So there we go. That's it so far. This is where we're at with it. Now, I have to say. I'm not super keen on that um that that um Dwergar metal uh that we used. So I might see if it's dry. Yeah, it is. So let's go over it now with some of this silver and see what it does. Because the darker coloration underneath will probably help make it a different looking sort of metal to the other stuff but you know we can just do that nice and quick and straight away i think i prefer it like that with that silvery look okay so now i'm going to go over some other areas in the brown the dark brown again i think i've either missed or could just do with another layer over here there's also particularly at the points where several colors meet um that's where you tend to slip and um accidentally color bits that you don't mean to or it's the sort of bits that you have missed because you were being too careful Let's make sure that we're getting in, not forgetting, should I say, to add on an extra layer, because sometimes it is worth just going over and adding an extra layer of paint on it, because sometimes it'll dry and you can still see the grey of the primer coming through from underneath, which is fine. Obviously, we ideally don't want to see any of that grey.
There we go. Looking good, if I do say so myself. It's nice as well, like, you know, like that red band? It's nice because, like, I've already got one goblin that I've done, and I also gave him a red band, so then it works nicely, because if you do a couple, it then makes sense that they're, like, part of the same group or gang or whatever, or unit, um, pack. I don't really know. I don't know what the collective noun for goblins is. Like, a gaggle of goblins. I'm going to go with that one. I like that as the collective noun. Um, so, you know, they're all part of the same gaggle. Um, Grubble... Grubble the goblin is uh, Grubble the goblin is part of a gaggle of goblins uh, that wear red, uh, armbands. There we go. That's a bit of a mouthful, but we got there. Okay, so let's get some more of this silver, and I'm just going to go back over this again, where I can still see that Dwergar metal that we put on first that we weren't super impressed with. Or at least I wasn't. I don't want to speak for you guys. Nice. Okay. That's good. I'm just going to go back over this top bit again. There. There's a few areas I'd like to add some more of that. On the weapons, where I've just maybe missed a few bits and bobs. And also, just to get on that second layer again to help with the grey, which you can kind of see coming through on that side. So if I just add that extra layer there, let's fix that immediately. Again, come over here, add an additional layer. And it covers up any of that grey that's coming through on the other side. Sorry, from underneath. There we go. Nice. Next then. I think we want to go for like a... Ah, the green, that's probably what we should do. I'm going to get the smaller brush and just patch up the green where we've gone around it, say like around that necklace. Uh, we've perhaps not quite stuck. And just tidy that up. There we go, immediately. One stroke and that was fixed up nicely. Same on the weapon fingers, where I've sort of smudged the brown over a little bit. Not an issue quite easily go in and fix that. There we go. On this side, same again on those fingers, because we are dealing with really small digits here. That's fine. And then again on the legs, where the brown has run over from some of them, just a nice quick little brush over. Nice and quick job. Making sure that we've got all the right colours in all the right places. And I can see a few areas of colour that we've missed, like just under the buckle of the ankle piece, where we're going to need some of this darker brown. And 
Sure. It's still hard to see sometimes. Exactly where you're trying to put the paint. So there we sort of had a bit of a misstep there and painted over the skin. But as I've said, once it's dried, we'll go over it with green and job will be a job will be a good one. We get that lighter colour again and just touch up on those inner thigh bits. We missed earlier. Are there any more of those? Is there any more of that brown that we need? Little bit there. I think that is looking pretty good. I know where we need some green on that um on on our left looking at it here. Where we sort of messed up with the gold a little bit. I'd forgotten about that. That's okay. We've spotted it now just add green in where we think it needs to go so we've just got that gold sticking out so there nice oh knocking the light again looking good now i'm actually here as well i'm gonna have a go at doing the toenail <laughs> but only need a teeny tiny bit here tried to keep them separate but it's a little bit hard and this one's going to be nigh on impossible to do simply because of where it is you can still give it a go and even if people can't see it it's nice to know that you have spent the time putting in that detail where you can okay so we've colored those in too much but we'll go back over it in green in a bit <clears throat> main foot has actually you can actually see that's actually gone off pretty okay You can just see the the tiles. It's kind of gross now that I've painted them because they look really long. <laughs> um, right, I'm just scanning it now to look for areas that we need to do before we start thinking about washes and such. Uh, we'll do the base as well. Um, I want to make sure I've done as much as I can before we start thinking about wash. Then whilst the wash is drying, we'll um, spend the last bit of today's session with me bringing up the model from last week and having a go at doing those eyes, like I said. Um, just. There we go. That's sorted that, that leg. Aha! I've spotted a bit that we've missed almost completely. Partly because of the way the light catches. The inside of this leg. Firstly, we need a little bit of the dark brown. Finish off that bit there. Then we need some of the lighter brown. To join this up on the other side. There we go. I think that's got it. And now that that white paint has probably set enough anyway, we can add in some more of the green to cut back so it doesn't look like he's just got like bones sticking out of his feet on this side. Okay, so other bits. Aha. Uh -huh. More again, 
We want pale brown with a belt. Yeah, just this tiny little bit here. There we go. Sorted. And what we'll do as well is we'll actually have a go on this weapon. There's like, oh, I think that was a bit too watery. So here, I'll we'll reach over, get some kitchen roll and dab off some of that paint where it got a little bit too watery there. So it just sort of slid all around where I actually wanted it to go instead of um, actually being applied on the surface that I put it on, if that makes sense. I'll go with a much drier brush this time. And see how that goes. There we go. Nice. So we've now got, I don't know if you can just see, on that sword on his waist, there's like some sort of strap, probably what the, it's because he doesn't really have a holster, he's probably just got it slung on there with that. So I've just drawn that on there to help um, highlight that that's what it is. Yeah, so. What else do we need to add? Let's clean up the back of the neck. A little bit on there. Just move it like around the back of the neck, where that neck lace is, and we've maybe not been super neat with our application of the bone color. And to be honest, we could probably just add a little bit more to his back a few other areas as well potentially need it just make sure there's nice coverage but it's kind of okay because skin uh skin color varies and i don't just mean like from person to person but from like part of body to part of body it doesn't matter if it looks darker in some areas and lighter in the others because when we had the dark wash it's going to change anyway but on top of that you know that i think that's just more realistic if it's got those uh, different shades, you know, because we are all, you know, we're not just, we're not just one shade all over our bodies. That would be really weird, actually, um, if we were. And it's probably the same for goblins. Definitely for Grubble. Okay. So next, I'm actually going to try and get <clears throat> like some of the bone color, maybe mixed with just a teeny tiny bit of black. Or maybe a bit more black. I don't know. It's kind of difficult to judge this. Because what I want to do is do the horns on here. Yeah, like that's just not dark enough. You get that? Drop that in there. I sort of want a marbly looking colour on, on there. We're not getting it. I think it's too wet. So that'll do as the first layer, because we can add some darker layers in a little bit as well. You'll also notice on the back there's a mushroom. We're just going to do that that nice bright ready colour. We'll mix in some um, a slightly darker shade as well, 
just to uh, so it's not exactly the same as the one that we've got on the armband. So we'll get a teeny little bit of black, like we don't need loads, because it'll just bring that into a much wipe off the X there. Paint that on. Because later on we can maybe add some dots to it or something like that. Again, just to make it pop a little bit. But this is at the back of the model. So it's not going to matter too much. Get that done. There we go. Nice little red mushroom there. Plain and easy to see. And we've got our skull at the front. We've done the horns a sort of lightish colour. We might add like a watery colour to it, um, like get it nice and watery so it's it become you get that sort of marbling effect on it. Um, <clears throat> then we probably want honestly for this ground. Probably want this this brown. Again, we can just sort of base it like that. And then we can add other colours to it if we want. Like I'm going to leave that stone maybe, do that a different colour, and then add in some different colours as well, just generally. We'll just get that based up and brown. Give it a few minutes to dry and then we can start adding bits onto it. Different shades and colours, etc. Once once I've got this on, I may take a teeny tiny break. Go get a drink and stuff. And it'll give this nice a nice ample time to dry so that we can then add some more colours onto it. Again, this is where it's getting tricky. Getting it in these in between places. Yeah. Which we're doing. We've kind of got some on the feet of the model. But again, that is a really nice and easy fix that we can do once it's dry. There we go. So we've got him on this nice sort of earthy looking ground, <clears throat> which we will 
come back to and add some more colour to so it's not just one flat colour. <coughs> it'll also give time for a lot of the other little bits to dry. Um, and we can start adding a few bits, uh, maybe a few little other bits on before we dark wash it. Um, and then we'll have to leave it and then next week we can maybe do the finishing touches on this one and then, whilst, and then we'll have a go at doing the uh, face or the eyes more specifically on the one from last week as well. So on that then, I am going to uh, flip over to the break screen and I will speak to you all shortly.
Hello guys, welcome back. <clears throat> okay, so we've had given the model time to sort of dry up a little bit and now we can start going in with some extra features on it. Oh, it's gone immediately out of focus, there we go. So we can see it. Just there like so. Now it is a case of, uh, you know, what do we want to add next? Well, firstly, let's do some work on the base. Let's plant this back in its stand. Um, let's see, what brush do we want? We'll go with the lighter one again. And here, to be honest, I'm just going to add random bits of like darker coloration. So like some of that really dark brown that we got earlier, might just dust some of that on around. You know, and it doesn't have to be like super perfect, just in a few bits and, you know, areas to give it a bit more variation in the color. So it's not just flat. So we'll add some of that in there. Just making sure it's moves. Now, you might have noticed that the base is actually a little bit big for this model, but I can't actually remember what I did. I seem to recall some <laughs> sometimes when you print the bases separately, you sort of forget which bases are for which ones. So it's rather a large base for a model this size because goblins aren't particularly big. But again, it's not like the end of the world that I've got that. It's it's fine. He's also positioned, like Grubble is positioned pretty far back on the base as well anyway, which um, 
which changes things a little bit. And then we'll go for Dungeon Stone. I need a ball bearing because I've not used this paint before. In, head back on. There we go. Because what we'll do is we will do that um that stone at the back. See what it looks like with a bit of the grey on it. One we want. Get rid of any excess water. And the first thing I'm thinking is it looks too clean. That's where things like um Dry brushing will help later on. For now though, that's absolutely fine. Do that stone like that. And what I'll do now, get some more of that bone colour and just go over some of the bits on the skull where, <clears throat> where that brown that we did the floor colouring with has maybe just run off a little bit. Nice. Also going to add <clears throat> again on the backs of the, the foot wraps where we have had some of the dark, the lighter brown sort of come up. We're just going to go over that again in that dark and oops didn't clean enough water off my brush I just got a big dollop of water on this uh, mushroom that should be fine the paint was pretty much set anyway so I've just dabbed that up nice and easy let's go back over here nice And again, I've got a bit of brown on the nail, on his uh, toenails, so I'm going to go back over those. And just a tiny amount. There we go. Nice. a little bit on the weapon as well sorry just realized i moved it out of the shot it's got the light has moved a little bit and i keep moving it towards the light so let's move the light there we go that's better nice okay we got the weapon done loin cloth all that kind of stuff is done Now I'm going to get a hint of black, mix it with a load of water. 
and just soak those a little bit. See if that does anything. Might not. Might not work at all. But you gotta try these things. Yeah, so he's coming on really nicely now. So much so that we could probably do the uh, the black base and then get the wash on, to be honest. So let's do that. Let's get our black. Where is it gone? It's, nope, that's stone. There it is. Get a nice stick brush this time. I'll do get that soaking. A door for black on there, and let's start painting that base. So, this again, easiest to do freehand. So, I'll take it out of here, grab an area that's dry in this case, the head, get all of that excess water off of the brush, nice coating of black, and then let's just go straight in there. Okay, so it's hard to see. Let's see if we can get it in focus. There we go. So just pulling that paint around as we go. We get a nice even spread. Rotate it in my hand a little bit. And keep going. And as soon as it starts to run a little thin, just load that brush up again and go back in. Now it actually seems like, much like the model last week, there's a tiny little bit of damage on the base on this side, but it doesn't matter that, that much. Again, nice and straightforward for us to just Go around and paint it all black. There we go. Now I'll just go around the lip as well. This is the hard, probably the hardest part of painting the base. This, uh, it's kind of hard for me to do this bit on camera. I'll give it my best go. But apologies if it dips out of shot or out of focus as this bit is a little bit finicky. Um, I've just got to move paint around this lip edge here. Again, bringing that up and just trying to get that edge here which is a bit finicky to do it's just about perseverance and patience There we go. Bringing that round, I think that's most of it done now. Nice. 
Okay. So that'll just dry over the next, I don't know, couple of minutes. But we can it's, it's fine to pop back in. Right. And next, we can probably think about doing a wash. Just going to use the one that I did before as a point of reference to see just how much of it I covered in the wash. It was a fair, it was, I think, most of it, if not all of it. Okay, so a few other bits that we might be able to do here as well as the teeth. So here. We want the small brush again. This is like a small detail. I don't even know if you can see them in the shot. Um, if we move that around there a bit. Yeah, you can kind of just make out the teeth. So again, this is like teeny tiny quantities of paint that we're working with here. And you just want a tiny little lick. And, uh, I'm going to have to take it off the stand so I've got some more flexibility. So, might seem a bit odd I'm tipping it upside down, but it's just so I can get a nice angle on the teeth. Because you only need a little bit. Like you don't need loads on there. I mean, maybe we could even try and get teeny tiny little bits in the eyes here. There we go, that'll serve as a nice base. We got the teeth done. You can kind of see the sort of white that we put in the eyes. And then probably now is time for the wash. Because to be honest, we could go back and make sure that we're, you know, nice and detailed with it all, but it's probably better if it's um, a, bit, a bit rough, because it's, it's, you know, it's a goblin. Doesn't exactly look after himself, the scribble. So I think we'll go for a brown wash here. As it'll help with the brown tones that we already have. And also, um, it'll make him look a bit dirty. Hmm, so we can use this one, can't we? Not a problem. So, like always with the wash, be liberal. Put the load on. It will just look better in the long run. Get it all over. It on the weapons as well. It'll help make it'll stop the bone from looking so clean, which is what we want. And then very much it'll be a case that <clears throat> we'll do the high. We can only do the highlights once the wash has dried, and the wash takes about an hour, so it'll probably be like next week. We get to do it. Everywhere that we can. 
try not to leave anywhere. Get it on that base as well. Washing it all over the skull and the floor. Feet, the mushroom, the stone, <coughs> all of it. And then we need to wait for that stone to do its magic. Stone? <laughs> I mean the um the wash, should I say? <clears throat> it's because I was I think it was because I was brushing the stone as I was um saying that I had it on my mind. But that'll again that'll help with all the colours in there. A hundred percent. It'll give them a lot more texture. Uh, particularly on the skin. I'm actually just going to add a little bit more on the back. Uh, just a small amount. He says he just proceeds to cake far, far more than a small amount on. That's absolutely fine. That's what we want. And then we can get our kitchen roll and just dab in a few spots. Pick up like any big bits of excess we maybe don't want. We're not trying to wipe it off, we're just dabbing like, like where there's just too much, it's too, yeah, the excess. Now we just need to wait for that to dry. But that, I would say, has been pretty successful. And that took a lot less time than I anticipated it would to get to this point. Um, overall, that has come out. Let's just see if we can tilt this down a little bit. Oh, this might tilt. You can see the light in the shot now. There you go. Again, always looks better when the wash dries out. So we'll have to wait for that to sort of dry out before we can really see what it's going to sort of look like as a finished model. Um, so, knowing that then, let's get our one from last week and spend a little bit of time and we'll move this to somewhere for it to dry. And we'll just place it down over here whilst that starts to set. And we will have another look at our model from last week, which has come out really nicely. I do say so myself. Uh, we've got nice detail. Like the detail is coming through. The dark wash is really like. And again, you can see where it's sunk in. Like, look at those runes on the waist. That's where the dark wash has sunk in, and it just highlights those spots. Um, the red sort of quill of the crossbow bolt. The, the dark wash has really made the, the, the sort of string, if you like, of the bolt come to life. Um, we've got a lot of nice colours in there. So, yeah. Next thing, then, is getting our teeny tiny brush. We might even have to go smaller than this one, but we'll have, we'll just see. We'll see, see what we can do. In fact, I'm going straight for the tiny one. Let's see what we can do here.
with the eyes. This, as I've said before, is the area that I struggle with the most. Doing the eyes. Already, I fear I've gone outside of the lines. We'll just do that for now. Get those on there. I might break off a really small piece of kitchen roll just to try and dab around this other eye. I think I've added too much. There we go. Okay, we'll let that dry for a, a minute or two and then we'll see if what we can do uh, in the way of the eye. I don't think it's too small, I think, for me to really get an iris in there. I can try. Um, we'll go for a, a brown, I guess. Again, we're dealing with such small um, bits here. It really is kind of difficult to gauge how much it is. I, really, I, what I need is what some of the other stream, uh, miniature painter streamers and uh, or content creators have, which is those glasses that magnify. That's probably what I need. And I really just go off the deep end into miniature painting. Let's see. Now this could make or break this model. Yeah, kind of looks like Satan now. It's hard to see, but it kind of looks a bit like Satan now with like brown dots on it. And then what we'll just finish up with is hopefully getting just a tiny little dot of black in there. And then that should maybe finish it up because I don't really fancy doing too much more to it. I like the sort of gruff plainness of the face that it, that, that, you know, that it sort of already has. We'll also, you know, on the goblin model on Gribble, we'll next week we'll add the blood on as well, the uh, glistening blood to the weapon. Um, I think that'll look really good once we get it done. Just giving it a gentle little blow, help the paint dry a bit. Let's see if we can get that black on. I am, however, super duper nervous about getting this because this is like so small now what i'm what i'm like dealing with here i'm just looking for something with like a, a nice clear tip on it so we just need like literally tiny tiny but that's probably too much we just want it And shaking like it's so small this is why this is probably my not it's it's not like my least favorite part it's just it's the hardest part i think the problem is, is if you get it wrong the character just looks uh sort of googly eyed and it breaks some of the realism that you put into it. Oh, that's too big, I think. Let's go smaller. On 75 mil models, obviously it's a lot easier to do those de these tiny little details. But when you're dealing with the 35 mil models, it can get a little tricky. Hmm. No. See the eyes. 
they haven't gone very well. As I've said, that is fine. We can always just go over it again. A little bit of cream. And have another stab, maybe. And perhaps it's even going to be easier if we just go for um, the iris. Sorry, not the iris, the pupil. As we're dealing with such small, we got this. There's very little room to maneuver around in uh, doing this, which is part of the problem. And we're probably going to need to get some of the ruddy skin colour again to just go around the edges of the eyes afterwards. We'll pour a little bit of that now as well. Now she kind of looks like she's like got, I don't know, like bandages on her eyes. It does look a bit googly eyed. But given that like this is probably the third time I've even bothered to attempt eyes because of how tricky they are. I'm gonna I'm gonna chalk it up to a win still. And then what we can always do is go around it so they don't look so big with some more of that ruddy pink skin colour. <laughs> oh man it does look kind of silly doesn't it but it's something that you've got to practice and what i'm doing here is sharing my like practice with you like i know that i'm okay at the other stuff and i know that i'm not good at the eyes so it's always going to go like this at least for a while until i get the practice in so that will probably do i think this model because I don't want to overdo it. <laughs> but suffice to say we've given it a go and that's the main thing. Okay? You just gotta keep trying until you improve. Maybe I need to watch some more clips on it um on how to do it. Because I'm not super familiar with how you get eyes to look good. So that'll do now, for now. Because I was pretty happy with the rest of that model anyway. Let's have a little look at this guy. It's still drying. I can still see all the moisture in, uh, on there. Uh, on the wash. Floating around. We'll have one more look before we close up the stream. It is going to be a bit of an early finish today. I anticipated that it would take uh, longer to do the goblin than it than it's taken. However, I'm not going to like force content for the sake of it and try and paint something really quick in like an hour. So I'd rather, like I said last week, I'd rather have a longer stream that ends early 
um, because we've done all that we wanted to do, then have one that's not long enough and just drag it out when it, it isn't written to be that long. But suffice to say, I'm pretty proud of how Grubble is looking at the moment. I'm excited to add those uh, finishing touches on him next week. I think it'll look really good once we're done. Um, I think we've uh, given it a, a really good go. And I might work on some of the lighting because it's just starting to get a little bit dark in my room. So next time I might see if I can bring one of my bigger lights in uh, to flood the space a bit more so that it's easier to see and we're not relying on the, the lights that I've sort of currently got here, which are a lot smaller. But yeah, well, um, this has been uh, The Prince Paints. So thank you guys for tuning in and giving me a watch. Uh, make sure you give me a follow as well. If you've got anything that you'd like to say, you know, drop a, drop something in the comments or whatever on it. Um, you guys are having a go as well. I'm currently in the process of setting up a Discord. When that's ready, it'll have um, a, uh, a channel on it for miniature painting. So if anyone can share what they've been doing on there. And that'd be really nice to see all the great stuff that I'm sure you guys are capable of doing. Uh, a lot of it probably even better than I, what I can do. I've only been doing it, as I say, like a, a month or so. <laughs> I'm just going to... There we go. There's a bit of excess, um, bit of excess in one of the eyes of the um, wash. So I just wanted to take it out. But yeah. That is Grubble the Goblin. Um, coming to a uh, highway near you to rob you of your um, of your trinkets and valuables. And I've been the Wild Prince. Thank you for watching the stream. Take care. Be good to each other. And remember to take your time when you're doing things like this. And there's no such thing as a um, model ruining mistake. You just turn into it. Steer into the curb. Because there will be a way of getting back to what, getting it back to what you want it to be. Right, take care, guys. Goodbye.